you know, I understand people realize that the connections between BIM and asset management are not only becoming mainstream, but they realize now that, that they're becoming critical to their operations. And, and you know, I just want to start off with a quick little uh, st uh, story uh, of, some of the some of the things that I've encountered over the years. And, and, you know, about four years ago, I had an opportunity to contribute language to a contract that was going out for a new bridge. I had to look out four or five years and say what I thought the state of the industry was going to be and how that would translate into usable technology for this group, you know, in terms of operations and maintenance. And not just in terms of, like, how do we optimize schedules or how do we optimize work orders, but really look at how the technology can be leveraged. So in the contract, we put in language that said, you know, that this, there would be a 3D model of this bridge and that the data would flow into an asset management system. And then that data from the, the asset management system would flow back into the model and be used to visualize what's happening in, in, uh, in the ongoing operations and maintenance. Back then, this technology didn't exist. Yes, 3D models were becoming mainstream, but not linking them to operations and maintenance systems. So we fast forward to today, and not only is this scenario real, it's happening now. Um, I know we all want to see the software, but let's just do a quick recap here of where the industry is today. So what we see now is that the, there's manual movement of data from one system and one process to the next. The data is constantly being rekeyed, and by the time we get to operations and maintenance, we're looking at a 12 to 18 month lag for the data to get from construction as built into the maintenance management systems. So this, is, this has impacts at every single stage. Uh, everywhere you see the manual re data entry, it's time, money, it's inefficiencies, it's, it, it's you know, data quality issues. Anybody that's done you know, data entry work or had to QA data entry work understands uh, the challenges associated with that. Now, the, the, the part of the challenge comes in on the operations and maintenance side. The, the staff, they're working. They're looking for information. They're contacting vendors. Or worse yet, they're paying for parts to be replaced. They're already under warranty. Now, if that picture is not scary enough, let's look at the cost impacts that it has across each one of these areas. So again, in each one of these, these different uh, areas, we have the, the cost of inaction, uh, which is in the, the red arrows going, uh, going up. You know, post-design, if you're not doing clash detection, you can expect to pay 10% additional for construction. You have increases in your, in your construction timeline. You have um, cost of 10 cents per square foot for understanding the project closeout packages, which means that you have to manually deconstruct these project closeout packages. But then as we shift over to the right, we start to see some real scary numbers here, which is that on an annual basis, organizations are spending 23 cents a square foot just looking for information. And that's not just a one-time number, that's an annual number. Um, but on the positive side, when we, when we start to incorporate a BIM process and a process for moving this data from, from area to area, now we start to see some real savings. There's 10% in construction, 7% decrease in the construction timeline, the 10 cents a square foot, and then we actually save the 23 cents a square foot annually because the information is there. It's available from day one for operations maintenance. And what does this all translate into for us? On the operations side, it's a net 5% reduction in operations costs. So how do we achieve all these savings? Well, that's why we're here today. So model stream. You know, you're one solution for moving data between Revit and Maximo. Model stream will create the assets in Maximo based on the Revit model. Model stream will populate the asset attributes from the model. Model stream will automatic, automate the creation of the location hierarchy in Maximo. And model stream will perform a bi-directional synchronization of data between these two systems. And, and here, here's a key point. It's not only is it bi-directional, but the native data remains in the source system. We don't pull data out into a third system that you have to maintain. We keep the data in the native environments. So this is really critical to a sustainable operation. Anybody that's into uh, familiar with IT systems, you know, more is not necessarily better. Um, 
so from my perspective, from I'm hoping what you see today, you know, model stream, you know, it's really about as exciting as software can get. We're now extending the envelope of the 3D environment into operations and maintenance. And so with that, I will hand it over to Brandon, and uh, he'll show you how, how model stream works.